Hi gang, Rob here. It is the afternoon of 26 April 2014. And uh, just driving home from work today on a beautiful spring day in the still free state of Indiana. And I'm speaking to you today as, well, I think from a position of some credibility. You know, if the government keeps lists, and we're pretty sure they do, uh, I think I'm on the one entitled domestic terrorists. Uh, I'm a lifelong Republican, a lifelong gun owner, a lifetime holder of a license to carry handgun in the state of Indiana. I exercise my Second Amendment rights freely and with uh, great responsibility and, <clears throat> and with gravity. I know why we have them and I exercise them for the purpose our founders intended. I have, uh, I have guns located so that they're within easy reach everywhere in my house. I never leave my house without a sidearm. Uh, I believe in the principles our founders wrote down and made part of our <clears throat> national foundation and our national history. I'm a Bible-believing Christian. I believe that our federal government should serve for its most basic purposes to secure life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I also believe that American citizens are free and sovereign people. Uh, and our Constitution was, a design, was designed not to establish the powers of government, but to restrict them, to enumerate to enumerate restrictions on federal government, realizing that all rights are incumbent and inherent in its people, and that federal government should never, ever step over certain boundary lines and see itself as preeminent, and its rights as preeminent, and that it is in the position of granting rights flowing from it to the people. So yeah, I am a right-wing extremist and on any paranoid, progressive, liberal, would-be dictators list of domestic terrorists, I believe myself should be on it. So that said, I want to talk about the Clive and Bundy situation. Uh, a couple of weeks ago I was I had some time, I think, on a Saturday afternoon, or maybe a Saturday morning. I watched a video from the Haas UMC, uh, talking about the little bit of research he had done and uh, the fact that he felt called to be in uh, those Las Vegas suburbs with some other freedom-loving patriots standing armed in support of Clive and Bundy. I actually felt a little tug at my heart to maybe jump on a plane and head there as well. Uh, you know, I'm a student of history. I'm a, I'm a student of the Ruby Ridge situation and, and uh, what was done to Randy Weaver and his family. I watched in terror early one morning during, during the Clinton regime as federal stormtroopers raided uh, a single family dwelling and ripped a four-year-old Cuban child from a closet with automatic weapons strapped to their shoulders. And I thought maybe this is the time. You know, maybe this is the time when freedom loving patriots atone for the times in the past 25 or 30 years when we stood by and did nothing. So I, I took some time that day and uh, did some research on that Clive and Bundy situation. 
and I found enough as I sort of objectively tried to weigh the situation, I found enough to tell me that maybe Mr. Bundy's cause was not the one uh, for which we should dig our heels into the ground. Maybe this was not the cause uh, for which we should stand. You know, let's kind of look at things from a big picture flyover perspective. You've got a Bureau of Land Management that's been in the business of managing designated federal lands for more than a quarter century. <clears throat> uh, the precedent set is a long established one. Might not be the best national policy in the world, but the federal government has been operating under the policies that led the BLM to make the decisions it did regarding Mr. Bundy for a long time and many, many thousands of Americans in similar situations to that of Mr. Bundy have been peacefully abiding by those policies. You know, is it wrong for the BLM to seize public lands and bring it under its jurisdiction and change the rules by which the public may use it and impose fees for the management of that land? Sorry, guys, I have a message on my screen that's bothering me. Yeah, it might be wrong for them to do that, but they've been doing it for a long time. And if it has really come to a head in those communities which it affects, uh, I'm talking about the policies and behavior of the, of the BLM. Let's look specifically at the Clive and Bundy situation and ask, where are those other like-minded people and similarly affected people in this fight, in this stand? You know, where are the other thousands of ranchers, not only in Nevada, but in the rest of the West, who have ceased grazing their herds on BLM-managed land or have just paid the fees and continued grazing their livestock on federal lands? Where were they? Where were the thousands of ranchers who had been wronged by the BLM? Where were their rifles um, in, the, in the past couple weeks? Why weren't, uh, why weren't the cable news programs chock full of interviews with ranchers who had suffered under these policies voicing their support for Mr. Bundy? Um, I guess perhaps because they had adapted, they had complied and moved on. Um, I don't know their reasons for not being there. But there wasn't a great deal of rage among people like Clive and Bundy. There was a lot of rage among the freedom-loving patriot movement, uh, among which I count myself. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to question the motives of people who think like I do for showing up in Nevada. Um, I do kind of question their discernment, however. You know, should we have been at Ruby Ridge uh, keeping Randy Weaver's family from being massacred? Probably. He was a he was a pretty simple, peaceful American who had been framed by making a mistake by trying to do somebody a favor. He ended up, uh, well, you guys know how that ended up. Should we have been in Florida uh, when Janet Reno's stormtroopers ripped Elian Gonzalez from his family's arms and shipped him back to Cuba? Yeah, maybe we should have. Might there come a day in the near future when we should be there, when a righteous man, a freedom-loving patriot who has done nothing wrong, is being persecuted, is being threatened by federal troops with automatic rifles, is having his property seized in a fashion that is truly egregious, yes, that day might come. And we all might need to be there. It might be the start of something big. And if it's the start of something big, it's going to be the start of something messy and lethal. And people are going to lose life, liberty, and happiness. They're going to lose family members. 
you know, this powder keg is large and its contents are volatile. And regardless of how it goes, regardless of who backs down or doesn't back down, when the day comes, everybody involved is going to be judged by history and be judged by his or her God. And if we're going to draw a line in the sand, and we're going to put those things at risk, we better make sure that our cause is righteous. And in the week or two following the, uh, the Bundy situation coming to a head, when the federal government backed down its armed stand and chose to take a legal course of action instead. What have we learned about Mr. Bundy? Well, we've learned that at best he's a dinosaur that doesn't know how to communicate in an unoffensive way on a national stage. At worst, Mr. Bundy is a racist monster. I don't know where uh, in between those extremes Mr. Bundy's heart lies. I'm not here to judge his heart. But I am here to say that uh, this was the wrong battle to choose. And uh, I do believe we're living in the final days of the Republic as we know it. And when an event is going to catalyze or hasten the end of American life as we know it, the end of the system of government that's been around for over 200 years, we better be on the side of righteousness when we choose that battle. And this wasn't the time. There's an old nut and fancy video, maybe five years old or so, entitled W-R-O-L, don't hasten the day. Perhaps we need to go back and watch that. That's all I have for today, my friends. Enjoy your weekend. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Talk to you soon.